Good morning, everyone. Many thanks to Professor Dilly and your colleagues, and Professor Ouyang, for inviting me to give this talk. It's such a great pleasure, pleasure and honor for me. As have shown on the、uh, slideshow, I'm Ya Li Jiang from Shenzhen, China. I'm working at the Human Settlements and Environment Commission of Shenzhen Municipality. I am the division、uh, head of the Division of Ecological Civilization Construction, a division that focuses on ecological protection, restoration. And construction for the city. In this presentation, I will use Shenzhen, a young mega city in China, as an example to talk about the challenges and opportunities、um, bridging science and policy, and、uh, how that might make a city a better place. I give you three sections of this talk. First, I will give a brief, brief introduction of the city of Shenzhen. Then, talk about the our challenges and opportunities in ecological and environment、uh, work. And at last, some of the projects that are designed to address these challenges. As I have known, some of you have been to Shenzhen, but some may not.、Uh, here are some quick、uh, facts about the city. Shenzhen is a coastal city in Guangdong Province, southern China, located within the Pearl River Delta, bordering Hong Kong to the south, and、uh, covers. An area of 1997 kilo square kilometers, pretty much 1.5 times of the size of the size of the city of L.A. Shenzhen has a warm, humid subtropical climate. Winters are mild and relatively dry, while some of the summer days are very. Humid and hot.、Uh, it has a total population of about 12 million in 2016, and its GDP totaled 338 billion last year, ranked the third in China, only behind Shanghai and and Beijing. Shenzhen is a young city, and still fast-growing mega city. As early as in 1970s, it was a market town. That changed in 1979 when Shenzhen was pro promoted to city status, and in 1980s, designating China's first special economic zone. Since then, Shenzhen has experienced rapid urbanization and economic development. These figures、uh, shows the dramatic population growth and the economic development in Shenzhen since 1979. From these photos,、uh, the left one is in. 1980s, a small town. The red one, and now, it is a modern mega city.、Mm. Uh, the following slide shows you the expansion of urban land. The red ones in Shenzhen. This is what likes in. 
five, ninety, ninety two, ninety five, ninety seven, two thousand, twenty o two, o five, ten, seven, fifteen. Sorry, and last year. It is now a national and international innovation center of high-tech industry. It is a home to the headquarters of more than 8,008 high-tech companies, such as Huawei, Tencent, BDI, and the number of international patent applications is more than that in Germany. Oh, it is also a culture and creative industry. Shenzhen is the first city in China to establish the ecological control line that aims to protect 50% of land from development. This pioneer work has led to the design and implementation of the national ecological red lines policy throughout the country. And now, Shenzhen has more than nine 900 urban parks with first coverage of more than 40 percent. It also, also has the only urban national nature reserve. Among all the Mega cities in China, Shenzhen has the best air quality and it continues getting better. Shenzhen has set the goal to meet the EU standard by 2020. The right figure shows an inverted U curve between per capita GDP and number of days with haze in Shenzhen with the turning point occurred in 2004. And now, challenges and opportunities. I am an optimist, so I would like to talk about opportunities. First, I think nowadays is the golden age for ecologists in China. For the first time, ecological civilization construction has been officially added into the constitution of China, and it is widely recognized the value of ecosystem services provided by nature, from the central government to local events. Additionally, there are increasing needs for scientific evidence-based decision-making and policy design. Also, there are many programs for ecological restoration. So, our city is still growing. Which puts great pressure on the environment and ecosystem. How to prote protect ecological land from urban expansion? How to continue improving air and water quality with increased pressure in consumption and emission 
brought about by pollute, pollute, population growth? And how can we elevate the adverse impacts of urbanization or biodiversity? There are lots of concerns and problems remain to be addressed. Another issue I would like to consider as both challenges and opportunity is the gaps between science and policy making. There are a lot of good science and tools, but we need more science and tools that are immediately relevant and easy to use so that science-based policy can be designed and effectively implemented, especially at the local scale. While it might be challenging, there are grand opportunities for scientists and policymakers working together to co-develop new science and tools. I think the natural capital projects sets a great model. And this is so why, oh, why I'm eager to come here to learn about it. All right, now I'm moving to the last part of my talk. I will talk about a few undergoing projects in, in which we try to bring scientists, resource managers, and policy makers to work together. So as the head of the Division of Ecological Dis Civilization Construction, I'm a, I am frequently asked by these questions. What are the ultimate goals of ecological construction and protection in cities? What are the measurable goals Thinking about my colleagues who are working on air and water pollution control, they have their very clear and measurable goals. For example, by year 2020, the concentration of PM 2.5 disease to 20 microgram per cubic meter. But for my division, what are the measurable accountable goals? More trees to concern percentage cover, birds, richness, and uh, diversity, carbon dioxide emission efficiency, efficiency. They all say something, but not all. Fortunately, Fortunately, I have had the chance to work with Professor Ouyang and his term in recent years. And we are more and more clear about goal, about our goal. That is to enhance the ecosystem services and human well-being in our city. But again, more science and tools are needed to design effective policy and to take actions. To do so, we need better understanding of the current conditions of the ecosystem. We need tools for measurement and evaluation. And we need to understand long-term changes. So there are three projects, as I will show in the following slides. These projects are designed to help address these issues. 
the Shenzhen Ecosystem Assessment Project, Urban Invest Model, and Shenzhen Long-Term Urban Ecosystem Observation and Monitoring Station. The first, the Shenzhen Ecosystem Assessment Project is funded by Shenzhen City and led by Professor Ou Yang. He is leading a team with many scientists. Uh, uh, some of their colleagues are here. Working close, closely with resource managers and uh, policy makers. The goal of the projects is to understand the changes in the structure and uh, function of Shenzhen urban ecosystem and the ecosystem service it provides since 1979. And we are very proud of being one of the test sites for urban invest. It will provide tools to support better policy and uh, policy design by incorporating the value of nature into urban design, urban planning, and resource management. In addition, we are building our long-term urban ecosystem observation and research station. It is a new platform co-founded by the Ministry of Environment Protection. And now it is called the Ministry of Ecological Environment. Just last week, China and the Shenzhen city having clear goals of supporting decision making. We hope this new platform will become an international research hub for urban ecological research. Our city is a city that is always looking for something new and exciting. It has been a national and global innovation center for high tech industry. We really hope Shenzhen will be the future innovation center for urban ecological research and build a model for urban sustainability. Thank you very much. <laughs>